Thank you, Risto. Thanks a lot. Thanks. And uh, our next and really last speaker of today uh, is Daniel. And uh, yeah, he is uh, going, well, he's a research fellow in the uh, metadata architecture at the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. And he's currently leading the Metasub project. So he's really the, the, the person to go to know about Metasub. So uh, he's going to share uh, uh, what, uh, with us what he's done over these years. Uh, he's given a talk last year as well. And uh, he's working actively together with uh, Libre Space Foundation. And outside of Metasat, he's also an active member in the software citation and attribution community. A very important point. Uh, in particular, in, in Germany, there's a, a number of politicians. They had to step back because they did not do a proper citation of their sources. So uh, they should have uh, contacted you for advice beforehand. Uh, but now we are going to hear from you about Metasat. Uh, so the floor is yours. You have 12 minutes, and then we have some Q&As. Great. Uh, well, thanks so much for having me. I feel honored to be the last uh, presentation for today. So um, a lot of you are probably already familiar with um, Metasat. I've been talking to you all uh, for a few years now, and so I know um, some of you may know what the project is already. Um, but I'll start with a brief introduction on what it is for those who don't know. Um, and so, um, yeah, Metasat is a metadata toolkit uh, specifically for small satellite missions. So it's uh, used to describe um, all aspects of a, uh, of a of a satellite mission. So that includes the the ground segment, the, the space segment, the launch segment, and some parts of what we're calling the user segment. Um, and so um, there's a lot of um, bells and whistles to Metasat, um, but primarily its main focus is on its metadata vocabulary. And that is a, uh, a list of over, I think it's over it's close to 1,500 terms now um, that are used to describe uh, those segments that I just mentioned. So um, let me just change this. Yeah. So. Uh, the issue that spawned the idea of Metasat was just, as I'm sure everyone is well aware, is just the massive proliferation of uh, small satellite missions. And with these missions comes tons and tons of data, uh, different types of hardware, different types of software, uh, and lots of resources from both prior to the mission, during the mission, and after the mission. So resources such as different uh, forms of documentation, like lessons learned documentation, um, all sorts of different data sets and things like that. So how do we organize all of this information? And um, what could we use to tag things? How do we structure them? And so that was the genesis for Metasat, was trying to address, address that issue um, in particular. So like I mentioned, um, Metasat is, uh, is tailored towards linking all these things uh, together. And so, our website, or also our database, uh, can be accessed at schema.space and then slash metasat. That's how you get to our vocabulary itself. So it is completely open and uh, collaboratively developed. Uh, so you know, uh, as someone without background in, in any sort of spacecraft engineering, or I haven't had any involvement in space missions before, uh, we have created the entire content based on um, on user feedback, and so. Uh, our friends over at LSF and SatDogs have provided a massive amount, um, but also different universities um, and actual missions. Uh, NASA is involved, and so a lot of different groups have uh, contributed uh, to uh, this this toolkit. Uh, so if you were to go to that link that I had there, it would bring you to our concepts page. And so I mentioned earlier that we bro we've broken it down into uh, segments, but we also have broken those segments down into individual, what we're calling concept family. So concept is a term. Uh, it's just another way of saying term. Uh, it also could be um, understood as a key in a way. Um, so yeah, a family is um, just a, a narrower way of looking at a segment. So for example, under the space segment, we have families for each um, individual subsystem. Uh, so we have uh, an attitude control 
um, family. We have a thermal control family, propulsion, um, electrical, all those different kinds of things. And so it's just a way of looking at the terms um, and organizing them, um, but it's by no means perfect. And there's a lot of overlap um, between uh, different families. So all these terms in the vocabulary are both human readable and machine readable. And we accomplished the machine readable part through creating uh, minting uh, URIs for every one of our, our, our concepts, every one of our terms. And a URI is pretty much, uh, it's, it's very similar to a URL, and it's just a way for machines to find um, a resource and to dig into it further. So our URIs, for example, for each term has uh, what we call a crosswalk to other existing standards and uh, vocabularies. So that means that, um, let's say you use our term uh, for, I think, yeah, thermal control, um, you'll be brought, so let's say you use that in your own database, the URI to our database will bring up all the information that you see on this slide. So it will include a description, uh, an example, uh, if there is available, a synonym, uh, so this is a big part, and then also the segments and families. Uh, so you'll see for gravity, it's very similar. This one has an example value. But going back to the crosswalk, so at the bottom of this page, you'll see the, all the different existing standards and vocabularies that we have crosswalked to. Um, and so this means that if you use one term in your database or API or, or website, that it's semantically linked through Metasat to other sources. And so, um, that let's say I have a database in Japanese. Um, if I use a Metasite URI, um, that could resolve to an English page by virtue of, um, let's say, a crosswalk to uh, Wikidata. So Wikidata has plenty of actual translations in it. So uh, it's just a way of linking together a bunch of different and often sometimes competing databases uh, so that everyone is speaking the same, uh, same language. And so here you can see the Wikidata page for gravity. Um, this would be something that we would link to um, just as an example. And you can see how it has a Spanish translation, uh, the Chinese, traditional Chinese, um, and stuff like that. So these URIs are um, tailored specifically to be used in the JSON-LD uh, data format. So JSON-LD is just a different serialization of JSON, regular JSON, for just optimized for linked data. What that is, is you can see at the very top here, there's an at context feature in JSON-LD. And with that, that's where we're able to import those crosswalks that I had showed you earlier. And so um, you could see, so it says that at vocabulary part right here is brought, it resolves to our website. So that resolves to pretty much every single other crosswalk that we've created. So you can use other people's terms throughout the course of this file, just by virtue of linking it out to Metaset. Um, and then in this file, you can see we had, we're able to rearrange or arrange uh, terms given whatever order we want. So this is just an example for um, a mission that uh, is operated out of our facility, the Minx mission. Uh, it's just a description of it, uh, the very basic. It's, this is just an example file, but you can see how we have terms for NORAD ID. We have things like uh, service life. We have uh, orbital elements um, and stuff like that. And so what you could use, you could use these files for tons of different things. So uh, LSS, so SatNogs uses it um, to organize uh, their databases, or at least to be to used in their API. Um, but they also could be used in things like search engine optimization. Um, and so you could put these in the header of your uh, HTML files of your websites, and then that can be used to inform Google's knowledge graph of what the content of your page has. Um, and so that is useful, let's say, you search Google for a synonym of a term through this file, Metasat can make sure that that synonym um, is brought up uh, as identified as being relevant to your particular website page. Um, and so we have a couple of partners. I mentioned SatNOMS already. So that has been amazing working with them. We also are involved with NASA's Small Satellite Virtual Institute. Um, that has been also fun. Uh, there's a bunch of different uh, collaborators in that. Uh, and so we're working on um, integrating Metasat within the uh, small parts on orbit now uh, database in addition to uh, things like their federated search system uh, tech port and um, and just different different uh, databases connecting them all together this Metasat is kind of like a glue of sorts you can kind of connect all of these different 
sources, uh, make sure that we're on the same page. And then the last one that, well, not the last, but the most recent is the Small Satellite Reliability Initiative. So this is um, uh, an offshoot of uh, SVBI and they're working on, if you're not familiar, a massive knowledge base. So something similar to Wikidata actually, but just for organizing things like lessons learned for small satellite missions. And so Metasat is um, now partnered with them. And so we're using Metasat to create their glossary in addition to using Metasat terms uh, to as tags for their search um, engine. So when you search for a tag in the new knowledge base, um, if it matches a Metasat tag, then we will then it will result in a bunch of papers relevant to what your search was for. Um, and then, so yeah, so this is the, the thing that I want to talk about most um, today because so we're looking to start a steering committee for Metasat. So like I mentioned, it's an open, openly developed um, toolkit and we want to create some more concrete ways of, um, of moving forward as far as informing our development and uh, creating uh, different, different, a new form of governance. Uh, and so we would like for people to, who are interested, you could reach out to me. At the end of the slide, I'll have contact information if you're interested in joining the steering committee. Um, we're trying to get as many voices in as possible. Um, but it's just, it's going to be very informal and just a way of us um, deciding what we should work on next. And um, what are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? How is our content? What else can we link down to? What other use cases do we have? Um, and so that is uh, one of the things that we're looking to do in the future. So that would also inform our new release cycle, um, which uh, uses semantic versioning at the present moment. So the other thing that we're working on is a new JSON LD generator. So on our website, you'll have a page. We have, we're gonna have a page soon that you could just fill out information about your space mission, for example, and it'll spit out one of those JSON LD files uh, that I, was, I showed you earlier. Um, we're working on creating RDF serializations for all of our terms. So that's the resource description framework. So that would just be something similar to um, just NLD files, but just for more broad applications. Uh, we want to create an API soon. Uh, that is something that I'm very excited for. Um, I mentioned earlier, so we're working on fast research and SEO related things. Um, and then uh, as always, community driven uh, development. And so uh, here is my contact information. Um, there's my website and we have a GitLab repo, which is where all the, uh, the, the hard and heavy work is, uh, is done. So, uh, thanks. Thank you, Daniel. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Meta. Good. So we still have, uh, yeah, a bit of uh, time left for a number of questions. So keep those questions coming in. Uh, I throw one in. Uh, I'm, I was pleased to see that you're using JSON instead of XML. Yeah. Uh, it was <laughs> very good. Uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> decision for human readers. Um, so my, I have read a thing. I have a queue, but I'm letting Patrick ask this. Oh, don't get it. Yeah, this, is, uh, this is a way to put Patrick on the spot, but he uh, maybe has no questions. OK. <laughs> uh, I have, I, yeah, I was like, uh, how do you get started when you, you have a mission? That's, uh, that's my question. And also, we, we I'm taking the example of the Polaris project, uh, for, for which I contribute. So we, we use the data from other spacecraft and would you love to add some semantics to it? And, and how do we do that? You know, how do we start? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I think it really depends on what you're trying to do, right? Um, and so right now um, we're experimenting with ideas of different ways of applying Metasat to knowledge management systems. Um, so trying to capture missions from beginning to end through, let's say, um, these JSON LD files that would inform a database on all of your uh, materials associated with the mission. So that is one possible route. Um, yeah, it really depends on what you like to do. If you already have, let's say, um, if you're involved with another organization, you want to make sure that your terms that are used to describe your spacecraft match with theirs. Um, there's that. I realize that when it comes to space missions, there's almost never just one organization involved or uh, one team involved. There's always a lot of different 
uh, people working on a project. And so this could be used as a way to connect all of them just by virtue of, it, of everyone speaking in the same language, so to speak. Yeah, I have a, actually, I had a, exactly the same question like Red. So I'm not going to ask the same question. So I refine it a bit. Uh, I was wondering that um, if, if we think about Wikipedia or Wikidata, people contributing uh, with their information and even trying to uh, stick to your syntax, uh, but still, uh, well, at least in Wikipedia, there's some moderation going on to make sure that this information is actually actually factual and not just made up. So what is your plan on this? Are you going to have some like uh, post-moderation checking? Yes, yeah. So um, this is a problem I think we've you know, faced by a lot of open projects is, you know, we just need to make sure that the, con the, the content in our database is, um, is valid and accurate. So, one thing that we're envisioning with the steering committee is to have uh, subject experts. Um, and so um, I've already reached out to a couple of different people. Um, for example, someone I know who is very um, you know, blockchain consensus. Yeah, it's an idea. Um, I, um, oh, sorry, yeah. So we were thinking about, I have someone in mind for um, propulsion systems, uh, for example, stuff like that. But um, I don't know, it's kind of an issue. Um, that we need to address more, and I'm open to have a conversation on that. Um, I, I definitely um, want as many voices in as possible. And I, the one thing I'm hesitant about when it comes to subject experts is that if it's only if their voice is being heard. So I'd like to make sure that um, we have consensus um, between everyone. Okay. So, uh, if I, I feel like there's a common uh, answer to the previous one is uh, you have to involve people. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. Yeah. And I see uh, in the chat, Patrick had mentioned uh, KMT as units in the JSON LB file. So that, that is a, uh, a Unicode. Uh, so we, um, in JSON LB, you could use Unicodes. Uh, I think they're, what's the name of the organization that makes them? It's involved with the United Nations. They have a, uh, a set of Unicodes. And so we, um, we use those in our JSON LB files to make sure that, you know, units are consistent. Maybe arrows. Yeah, talking about codes and, and formats, I realized that uh, the state formats that you use, they were like just plain as we write on a letter. I don't, I mean, like 9th of June or something, but uh, would you not consider to use some kind of uh, more passable format like ISO format? Yes, absolutely. Or yeah. is, can everything be parsed? Um, so uh, you're referring to like the examples in like the database, those those values, or in a JSON LB file. Uh, so the values that we have in our database, for example, are just strings. They're not semantic. They are just for actually those values are purely for um, user friendliness, just so you could get an idea of where this concept would be used. So those don't have any semantic meaning. I would like them to, and I could envision us using something like a, an ISO standard or something for that, or Unicode, for example. When you actually implement these terms in, in, in a file or a database or something like that, that's when you can really get more precise and use like Unicodes. If you're using json LD, for example, it's very easy. OK, thank you. Also, Piero uh, is mentioning you, applauding your talk in the chat and uh, good, that uh, brings us to the end.